week of editing. Okay. Come back. Okay. So this is a big map. It's got a lot of streets on it. I don't know. I don't know if I can find Deverell Street on it. Has a lot of so there are some like buildings that are labeled. Um, there's the Bethlehem Lunatic Asylum. Sounds like a fun time. Victorian Lunatic Lunatic Asylum. Um, I bet that wouldn't be horrifying at all. Why? Where? Where is Deverell Street? Deverell. 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 Seems like a bad way. Why can't? Um, can we Google Maps this maybe? Uh Okay. Um I don't want to spend literally all night looking for streets on this map just hoping that it will jump out at me Drury Lane uh, Drummond Bank Charing Cross Hotel uh, Like under gunsmiths, it, it lists their company. But that's it. Uh, like Colt Firearms, Grant Arms, Rigby and Company, St. Jeff, Wesley Richards, Winchester Arms. Doesn't have the plants, like the factories. Um. Okay, so the other thing that we could do, here's what we could do. We could either pour over this map for fucking ever, or we could look up what's his dude. Uh, what was the uh, the name of the, the worker? Um, Engineer Richard Camp. We could look up Richard Camp and talk to him, and he might help us figure out where the factory is because he works at the factory um i like that i'm gonna do that i would i you would never <laughs> roto penguin says uh you never pass the london cabbie exam at this rate that is true i would not um and uh jesus christ that london cabbie exam is insane like this this map i don't know if this is an accurate map of london i assume it is like somewhat representative uh like look at that crazy nonsense and um i have met london cabbies and they have an exam that they have to pass to be a london cabbie and you have to know like fucking all of those roads man it's crazy um Deverell is bottom right uh, by the southeast on my map and by 12. Bottom right, southeast 12. Yeah. Uh, and 12, 12 southeast is the only thing on Deverell. Uh, nice. Very nice. Archduke for the win. Let's do that. Let's, let's do that. That's really good. I like that. Super rad. 12 Southeast. Well, let's see, actually, before I write it down. Let's see if it's in the book. Is this a valid place to go? Uh, southwest. 
Southeast. 12. Southeast. We entered the typically grimy manufacturing environment of the Deverell Street plant. Fuck yes! Archduke, that was radical. Thank you. Um... Now you look in the directory, really? I should have No, I'm not gonna I'm not even gonna I'm not even gonna do that. Okay. Twelve, southeast. We enter the typically grimy manufacturing environment of the Deverell Street plant. Lord Ragland ain't here, but I could show you to Mr. Co Key Kehoe's office. He's the governor's assistant. It is evident that Walter Kehoe has come up through the ranks and would be more comfortable in overalls than his present ill-fitting tweeds. With a meaty paw, he tugs at his shirt collar and asks us our business. Can you tell us anything about Mr. Allen's visit here on the morning of March 9th? Odd, I thought it was, so I remember right enough. Uh... Oh, that's what plant means. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Plant 8 a.m. in the date book. I have been thinking about plants, like fl flowering uh, things, plant organisms this whole time, uh, even when they started talking about factory plants. Sorry. That's okay. Uh, he, so he visited in the morning of the day that he died. Odd, I thought it was, so I remember right enough. Mr. Allen came to see his nibs, or Lord Ragland, but he weren't here. Mr. Allen says he'll wait in the office. Do you know why Mr. Allen came to see Lord Ragland? Now, I wouldn't be knowing their business, but it was most likely about project number 10, it being secret and all. Uh, there was hangers on around the plant, foreigners and whatnot. Do you know what transpired when Lord Ragland returned? What? Well, he never did return. Leastways, not before Mr. Allen left. I was called away, and when I get back, Mr. Allen, uh, he hands me a note. Says it comes for Lord Ragland, and I was to be sure he gets it. He also says that he'll see Lord Ragland some other time. Perhaps it's best I don't even mention that he came by. Lord Ragland was a, in a bit later, stayed for a couple hours, and left for the day. Odd it was. What time? What time, fellow? It's important. A begrimed workman enters and informs Kehoe of some problem with a piece of machinery. I'll get back. Uh, I'll be back in a moment, gents. Why don't you wait in Lord Ragland's office? Left to our own devices, when Kehoe is at the workman's leave, I, we can't help but notice a drawer in Ragland's desk partially open. And of course, we can't help. But of course, we can't help but peek in. We do not discover much of interest, only a stack of invoices and a bundle of stock certificates. One of the invoices is from Radford Jones Company for 140 guineas. It is dated September 5th, 1887. So the previous year, like six months ago. And stamped, paid March 10th, 1888. Okay, so like two days ago. Okay. We're going to have to look up Radford Jones uh, as a company. Radford Jones. Radford might be a name. Jones SC Company. I don't know what that means. Uh, stock certificates are in 5,000 shared denominations for several different companies. Among them, Rafferty Paper Mills and Stevenson Iron Works. We managed to close the drawer just before Kehoe returns. A little kick in the slats always does the trick. Now, where were we? Uh, a very impressive safe. All plans are kept under lock and key to be sure. Would you take us as someone who could tell us about project number 10? Well, the only one around now would be Richard Camp. He was an engineer on the project. Not on it anymore, but he can tell you a thing or two. Kehoe leads us back to his office and out into the corridor. The noise of the plant, curiously insulated in Raglan's office, grows stronger, stronger as we approach Camp's office. We knock and enter, but the office is vacant. He may be down on the line. Let me check. Kehoe's second absence gives us a check to, chance to prowl around Camp's office. The desk is littered with plans and formula notations, none of which means anything to us. Next to a cigar humidor is a framed photograph of a young woman. She is very pretty with extremely long dark hair and she radiates a bright dimpled smile. What the fuck? Somewhat, like what is that 
mean? What is any of that? Somewhat blurred in the background is a vaguely familiar cathedral with two square-topped towers. Before we can rummage further, Kehoe returns. Mr. Camp left early, it seems, not feeling well. Well, thank you for your time. So we might be able to find him at his home if we want to. If, if it had said mole, Sean would still be thinking about gardening. Would still think about gardening. It's true. I am terrible. Um... <laughs> okay sorry i'm just reading through the last couple minutes of chat uh is this woman mysteriously german it is not the german woman that we know because she was a prototypical aryan and this woman had radiant dark hair uh <laughs> like that is like a lovecraftian description what the fuck her tentacles seem to reach out of the portrait and caress your heart yes 100 percent. very very true very good um okay so i don't know why we didn't press this further because i super want to know but Mr. Allen came in, uh, his, his plan was, uh, 8 a.m. Surprise, oh, plant 8 a.m. surprise. It was a surprise visit to the plant, maybe? I don't know. 8 a.m. he comes in. Lord Raglan's not there. Mr. Allen says he'll wait in the office. Uh, dude was called away, and when he got back, Mr. Allen hands him a note. Says, uh, it's for Le Lord Raglan. So, I don't know how long that was, but presumably it didn't leave him waiting for, like, hours and hours. So, maybe, maybe it's a couple hours, maybe it's 10 o'clock. Seems unlikely that it's even that late. Uh, uh, Lord Ragland was in a bit later, stayed for a couple hours, and left for the day. So, unbelievably vague. Unbelievably vague. No idea. That could mean literally anything. Except that Ragland said that he stayed late. And that is not what this description says. This description says that he came in sometime after 10 a.m., stayed for a couple hours, and left for the day. Doesn't sound like he stayed late, right? So, like, where's that alibi? And now, what's crazy to me about this, now, I get it. I get it. I don't know how you do this in this medium, but as a as somebody who is embodying a detective, all I want to do is push on this hole in the story and to ask this guy, well, can you remember specific times that Ragland was there? Uh, or at least can you give me like a window and then go back to Ragland and say, hey, dude, what up with your alibi? Well, you probably don't do time clocks. Roto, I, I get your point, uh, but the senior vice president of the company probably doesn't do a time clock. Um, okay. I kind of want to talk to Richard Camp, who was not there, who was at home, presumably. Um... Cause, uh, cause maybe he might know something. He is like my whole theory that I'm building does lean pretty heavily on the idea that camp, that, that Courtney, 
Uh, Raglan murdered Courtney for some reason. Uh, that reason is that Courtney was getting too close to the truth. Uh, so his suspicion of camp that Raglan brushed off uh, must have been too close to the truth, right? Quinn, have a good night. Uh, I feel like I'm pretty close to this. I, I do, I want to hedge my bets. Um, uh, I want to hedge my bets and talk to camp, but unless camp, like, gives us some crazy new story, Twenty three Northwest. Um, we're gonna wrap this up, having gone to very few places and just leapt to some fucking conclusions. But we do have somebody with a potential motive who uh, whose alibi does not check out. Like, what does that mean? And also, there's circumstantial evidence tying him to the scene of the crime. So, I mean, you know, what else is a Sherlock Holmes going to do? 23 Northwest. 23 Northwest. All right, Richard Camp. We find Richard Camp in the sitting room of his bachelor apartment nursing a cold. All right, so he does actually have a cold. Uh, and looking thoroughly miserable as he pours the spoonful of Dr. Sari's magical elixir <laughs> advertised in the, the newspaper. He is seized with a fit of sneezing, causing the liquid to spill down his shirt front. Blast, he curses. He flings the spoon across the room and takes a slug straight from the bottle. Ill health puts me in an ill temper, he says by way of an apology. We're sorry to inconvenience you, but we would like to ask you a few questions. Would you tell us why you were removed from project number 10? Lord Raglan simply assigned me elsewhere. Since project number 10 was well along, he felt I would be more useful in other areas. He also mentioned that my visits to the French embassy had been misinterpreted in some quarters, and perhaps it would be politic a politic move. Your visits to the French embassy? I am secretly engaged to the daughter of the vice council. Her father is a most difficult man. Her uncle, Emile Zobar, is sympathetic to us. Since I work for an arms company and he is the military attache, my visits there were ostensibly to see him. Both Mr. Allen and Lord Ragland were well aware of the real reasons for my visits. Then why would Mr. Allen have been uh, suspicious of him? Okay. Okay. All right. Uh... <laughs> um, okay. Uh, did you ever discuss project number 10 with Monsieur Zobar? No, I would never. Uh, and where were you the evening of the 9th? I met Annette, my fiance, at Rules. We took several hours to dine, and then I brought her home to the embassy. Just one more question, Mr. Camp. Do you smoke Benson and Hedges Imperials? No, I don't. They are a favorite of Emile Zobar's, though, and I gave him some for his last birthday. Why do you ask? Just following up our leads. Thank you for your cooperation, Mr. Camp. Hope you're feeling better soon. That is so interesting. Uh, like, chances are that we have gone to the scene of the crime before we visit Richard Camp. Especially because Richard Camp is not somebody that we have as a lead from the very beginning of the case. Um... But it's not certain. Like, if we had gone to Lord Raglan first, who is somebody we did have from the beginning of the case, we would have gotten Richard Camp's name, and we could have gone straight here. And then the Benson and Hedges Imperials question wouldn't, wouldn't mean anything. Um, but we did get a uh, Emile Zobar who is the uncle, is that right? 
the French uncle of his secret French fiance. Oh no, the father. No, the uncle. The uncle. All right. The yeah yeah, yeah. Zobar is the uncle. Uh, it doesn't have the dad's name. It seems like Zobar is the person that is interesting. Um, yeah, I don't know. It doesn't actually say the name of the father. Um... Oh God, create a beast. No, no, no Chinatown. Um, okay, uh, let's, so what are the leads that we can investigate further? We could go to the embassies. We could go to the French embassy and see what's going on there. Um, but I'm guessing this engagement is on the level, or at least the French will support it, right? So I'm not sure, uh, what, uh, Richard Camp's address was 23 Northwest. Um... I'm gonna look. I'm looking at the at the notes. Uh, killing Ali behind workplace, so he's meeting Egan at work. Uh, no, he was leaving work to go to Egan. Random connection. William Linhart is fair-haired. Possible German connection. Good point. Um, Ragland and Allen were aware of the engagement. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. So we could go, we could in investigate the, um, you know, actually Mycroft might be a better place to go uh, to get some, like, diplomatic scuttlebutt. Who else would we talk to about who is spying on these folks. Like, I feel like I have a narrative. I guess I have no evidence that... I, what I really would like is evidence that either camp or... Uh, What's his name? The guy who actually murdered him. Ragland. Uh, had some kind of illicit dealings with people. So let's follow up on the diplomatic. We can check out the French embassy. Uh, potentially. But I think we should talk to Mycroft first. Let's do that. Let's talk to Mycroft. Uh, here is that. Um, Mycroft Homes, 8 Southwest. Eight Southwest. We are joined by Mycroft Holmes in the Strangers Room at the Diogenes Club. Is that right? Di Diogenes? I guess. Um, how can I be of help to you, uh, Master Wiggins? Mr. Holmes, so wait, okay, so we are, we're playing as Wiggins, but sometimes when we go places, Watson and Holmes are with us, but not always. Okay. 
Um, how can I be of help to you, Master Wiggins? Mr. Holmes, we're working on a case with your brother. Could you help with any information on the Grant Arms Company? Of the company, I know very little, says Mycroft, uh, settling his great bulk into an armchair. I do know that they are working on a secret project for the Admiralty. Who else might have known? The fact of the project is certainly common knowledge among the arms community. The details are only known by a few. Who would be most interested in obtaining those details? Uh, Delguera, Zobar, and Meshkov, certainly. The military attaches for Spain, France, and Russia, respectively. Then, of course, Count von Schul Schulenberg. It has long been suspected that he is more than simply the German attaché. A spy? Let me put it this way, and you draw your own conclusions. His bride is not, in fact, his new bride. Her name was Frida Rudel four months ago, and her name is still Frida Rudel. What? His bride is not, in fact, his new bride. Her name was Frida Rudel four months ago, and her name is still Frida Rudel. So, implying that she is not, she did not get married in the last four months. So, and presumably, I guess, that he, she did not get married to him. Because uh, she would have taken his name. So, they're not married. Interesting, interesting, interesting. So she's a spy. Interesting, interesting, interesting. Okay. Um, we have not dug deeply into the newspaper. We have looked at some stuff in the newspaper. Um, there's a paramilitary intelligence section. Um, but it doesn't have a lot of informa information in it. Pianos, music boxes, uh, there's uh, just an advertisement uh, to capitalists. Uh, there is the, the it is a this is a newspaper ad seeking a an angel investor. Um, somebody has a startup business for a, a most successful automatic machine. Which, I mean, sounds like a fucking startup, right? Yeah, I don't know. I don't see anything um, particularly interesting here. India, Suez Canal, uh, Australia. Um... Uh, you know, I mean, there's, there's like stuff, it's just not, there's nothing that's obviously connected to anything that we're doing. I don't, I don't see it. Okay. Um, so Mycroft was not super helpful, but he did suggest... Uh, the address for Mycroft, by the way, in case it matters, is 8 Southwest. Um, and, and actually, I'm just going gonna, gonna to add that to notes because I have that power. 8 South Southwest. Um, I mean, I don't like I, I'm OK with being a little bit conservative, I guess, uh, like we are running out of time and that is gonna that like that clock is a thing but let's 
go to um, the uh, where are we going? Dip diplomats offices. Uh, what is that called? It's called embassies. Embassies. Let's go to the embassy. And let's start with the French embassy. Uh, it is worth noting that um, let's see, uh, Spaniard tonight, ten p.m. Oh shit. What's the what's the name of the secret project? Uh, do we have that in the notes? Secret project was ten A. Okay. Okay. Never mind. The note is says SP ten, uh, Spaniard tonight ten p.m. Oh, and this is AM. Who the fuck is AM? AM. I don't I don't think we know anybody like that. Cuz it's not Huh. Uh, uh, it's not um, Courtney, obviously. It is written like it's a signature. Oh, so it's a note that was given to him by... Uh, Was it S10? What's wait? Hold on. I'm gonna look up. I gotta look up the. Uh, uh, I gotta look up the name of the project because if it's if it is S10 or SP10. Um, project 10A. No, that's correct. It's 10A. So that's not that. Well, unless it's special project 10. SP10. Spaniard tonight, ten PM A M Okay. Yeah, so SP ten does seem like that. So he's meeting Captain Egan at eight thirty and then the Sp Spaniard, presumably the Spanish attache, at ten PM. Huh, okay. Um, and who the fuck is A M? Uh, Alan, no. No. Courtney Allen, I don't. I do not know. I don't know who that would refer to. I guess we could go to the Spanish attache. I don't think we know any M's. Except for Mycroft and Marlowe. We know Philip Marlowe. Um... Okay. Let's start, let's go tour the embassies. Let's go to the French embassy and then the Spanish embassy. Russian embassy doesn't seem especially interesting, but Marlo, sorry, uh, Marlo is an M, but it's Marlo Holmes. So AM doesn't make any sense. That's true, Meshkov, but, oh yeah, Meshkov. Well, let's, let's look up Meshkov. Uh, that is the Russian uh, attache Alexei Meshkov.
Okay. Okay. So the Russian attache gives him a note that says Special Project 10 Spaniard tonight 10 p.m. So maybe they were going to talk about the Spaniard? Uh, or maybe the three of them were all meeting? Alright, so I'm going to lay off the French. Uh, Zobar, I don't know that Annette's last name is Zobar, but the French... Uh, okay, what was Mycroft 8 Southwest? He did, I think he said, uh, the name. I think he did say the name. And I just didn't pay that much attention to it. 8, what was it? South, oh, Southwest. 8 Southwest. Uh, Zobar is the attache of France. So, um, uh, yeah, so that would, that would probably be her name. Um, okay. Let's talk to Russia, because Russia apparently handed them this note that suspiciously says SP-10 on it. I don't know why it also says Spaniard. That is weird. Uh... 34 Southwest. At the door of Alexei Meshkov's home, we are met by a giant in a Cossack uniform. We ask to see Dr. Me Mr. Meshkov, gives us a perplexed look and says something in what must be Russian. The only intelligent word is Meshkov. We repeat our request and the Cossack says, Da, Meshkov. Then he repeats what he said first. Uh, this is a fucking comedy of errors. Finally, we come to the conclusion that we should uh, repeat ourselves a thousand times over, and neither would understand the other. We decide that the better part of Valor is to retreat to the nearest pub. Uh, so, actually, I should have gone to the embassy. That is my bad. But, under uh, Kyla's house rules, um, we are not counting that. 54 Southwest. 54 Southwest. 54 Northwest. Fifty-four Southwest. At the Russian Embassy, we are escorted into the office of Alexei Meshkov, military attaché. His massiveness is not uh, obscured by his desk. He is friendly, chatty almost. My government is very, very interested in the new naval gun being developed by Grants. That I cannot deny. We have done business with Mr. Allen's company in the past and have always been satisfied. The Tsar, may God preser preserve him, has very large borders to defend as well as a large fleet to arm. Does he? Where Where is Russia's fleet? On the Baltic? Does Russia have a large fleet on the Baltic? I don't know. Okay. Um, uh, large borders to defend as well as a large fleet to arm, but we are a patient people. I point to the Balkans as an illustration of that fact. We will wait until the British government deigns to allow Grant Arms to sell us the new gun. As Meshkov finishes speaking, there is an unexpected clatter behind the desk. Ah, thank you, young man, he says to Wiggins, who retrieves his cane, which had slipped down from the edge of the desk uh, of its own volition. Meshkov uh, pats his thighs and explains, an affair of honor some years ago, although not too many years ago, he laughs. As my adversary fell forward, shot dead through the heart, his pistol went off accidentally, much as the cane slipped, just slipped from the desk. Unfortunately, the ball found my leg. Sir, would you mind telling us where you were on the evening of March 9th? 
Meshkov tilts his head and laughs heartily. Of course not, my friends. I attended a performance at the Covent Garden Theatre and was there all evening. Since we have nothing more to ask, we thank him and take our leave. Uh huh. Okay. Shit. Create a beast. Is this an article from the newspaper? Uh Yes, it is. Good catch. Fatal explosion of shell, St. Petersburg, March 11th. This afternoon, as a wagon load of old artillery material which a dealer in iron had bought from the government at public auction, was being discharged at the purchaser's place of business, a 9-inch shell, supposed but erroneously to have been duly unloaded, burst in the midst of a number of people. 16 persons, including 4 children, were killed on the spot. Several others were more or less seriously injured. Hmm, interesting. Um, that suggests maybe that they, uh, the Russian government has outdated technology that they are trying to get rid of. Uh, presumably they must need or have new technology to replace it with. Um, okay. I was also, sorry, I was just looking at the shooting, uh, competition, um, which uh, lists the participants, among which are Count von Schulenberg, the German attaché and apparently spy, uh, Philip Marlowe, the newly presidented uh, president of the company, uh, that what's his name, um, Emile Zobar, the French attaché. And I guess that's it. Uh, Schulenberg did not win the whole competition, but he, he won out of those three. Uh, bleh. So, anyway, the, the, they have met each other, but that's not a surprise. Like, they would have known each other. Um, nothing about the note. How about talking to Spaniard? Let's try talking to Spaniard. That was, how, what was that? That was, uh, uh, one, two, we did, uh, Grant Arms Company Crime Scene, Lord Ragland, Devil Street Plant, Richard Camp, Mycroft Homes, the Russian Embassy, um, let's now do the Spanish Embassy, 38 Southwest. Thirty-eight. Thirty-eight. Ah, God damn it, he's at home. Well, listen, that is <clears throat> amazingly inconsistent. I mean, not really. But it would frustrate me <clears throat> if we weren't using the house rule. Del Gad. Should I judge him? by the fact that his uh, name means like warlike not really warlike war war oriented battle oriented 
down, down. Where the hell is it? Derek Denton Delguera. Hector. 36 WC. Alright, here we go. 36 WC. <clears throat> um, our interview with Hector Delguera at his home is suddenly interrupted by the entrance of three small children into the parlor. They fairly fly into the room with a swoop upon their fa father, covering him with hugs and kisses. Close upon their heels, their governess issues a string of Spanish commands, which once again restores order. After formal introductions are made, the awkward curtsies by the little ones, the governess bustles them away and Senor Delguera is able to continue. It was a formal dinner party, you see. March 9th is our wedding anniversary. There were 30 or so guests and they began arriving a little after 7 o'clock. As I recall, Count von Schulenberg and his wife were the last to arrive at about 8.30. Okay, so obviously he didn't murder anybody. Count von Schulenberg could conceivably have done so. Um, that was a weird note. That was just a super weird note. SP10, Spaniard, tonight, 10 p.m., so, like, after the party, I guess. Have we... We have not talked with Captain Egan? Shit. I should have done that. Okay. Let's talk to Captain Egan before we go any further. I'm gonna look him up. Look him up! Egan, 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 Egan. Elephant, Elfman, Embard. There it is. Egan. No, Egan. John Egan. 47 Northwest. That's a lucky number. I bet this is it. 47. No, what did I say? Northwest? Northwest. Forty seven Northwest. We're told by Captain Egan's landlady, whom we suspect was once a bosun's mate on a man of war, that he is at the Admiralty. God damn it. Um government offices. Government office, colonial office, foreign office, home office, India office, printing office, war office. Where is the Admiralty? Uh, steamship companies. Okay. Uh, all of these are in Southwest. Let me look at the map. Southwest. Now, in the 90s, where the hell are the 90s? Am I crazy? 91, 92, 93, Southwest. 90.
Good God, these are just fucking randomly numbered. The, the the numbers the numbers are meaningless yikes okay I don't see oh shit it continues oh, no it doesn't no it doesn't um oh the parks are also numbered okay that doesn't actually help me I see uh, like 88, 89, 90, uh, and then 96 is far away from that. Where is 92? It's not in between them. Ten Southwest for the Admiralty. What is? Oh yes. Okay. Good job. Thank you. That is ultimately what I was looking for. I still can't find any of the other government buildings, but a hundred percent on the map, listed at number twelve. Southwest is a building marked Admiralty, and Kyla found it. Thank you. Um. Look it up alphabetically. How? What do you mean? Can I, oh, like look up Admiralty. Not under businesses. Admiralty the 10 Southwest. Well, shit. Thank you for that. That is very good. All right, 10 Southwest. I thought all the names were... I Like, I didn't think business names would be under the name names. I didn't think that Admiralty, comma, the would be one of the names listed. But clearly, I'm an idiot. So, 10 Southwest. Captain Egan is a small bulldog of a man. He paces back and forth behind a massive oak desk as if, he were a, as if it were a quarter-deck railing. Eight months ago, Alan came to this office with the designs for a new naval gun. Revolutionary in concept. Can't say much about it. Most secret, don't you know? The design was approved and money's advanced for its development. Can you tell us anything about the meeting Mr. Allen was to have with you on the evening of his murder? The captain barks out a name, unintelligible to us, and an aging lieutenant, long since beached upon the promotionless shores of paperwork, scurries into the room. Amazing. Bring me the Grant Arms Company file, Alan sent me a wire this morning. Quite vague, closed-mouthed fellow when all is said and done. Uh, he was worried about security this morning? That can't possibly be correct. Bring me the Grant Arms Company file. Alan sent me a wire this morning. Quite vague, closed-mouthed fellow when all is said and done. He was worried about security for project number 10. I know, but wouldn't say much about it. His responsibility, he'd take care of it. Of course, I put some of my men on it anyway. The lieutenant returns with the file and it is dis and is dismissed for the time being back to oblivion. The captain shows us first the wire. It reads, Meet tonight, 8.30, your office. Call out the guard. Pounce at 10.00. C. Allen. Huh. Huh. Okay. Um, interesting. He then shows us a detailed list of the activities of Richard Camp, a development engineer on project number 10. As you can say, see, he was always bringing boxes and bundles to the French embassy. Emile Zobar, French military attaché, has his offices at the embassy. So do you believe that Mr. Allen's wire implied he had information impl implicating Camp in a security breach of project number 10? I did. Still do. But Lord Raglan, head of the project, assured me that Allen's security fears were unfounded. We met two days after Allen's unfortunate death. As a precaution, he told me he would remove Camp from the project. 
Since the conversation, I've concentrated my efforts on Zobar, von Schulberg, Schulenberg, Delgera, and Meshkov. Their governments uh, would all have great interest in our new guns. So far, my men have uncovered nothing. Thank you, Captain. Um, call out the guard, pounce at 10. He had a note on it in his possession that said Spaniard 10 o'clock. Uh, so like, and he would have known where he was, where um, Delguera was, because he was having a fancy party that night. But all of that has nothing to do with Richard Camp. And um, he, Richard Camp was always bringing boxes and bundles to the French embassy. But that could be like flowers and chocolates and things. Like, it's hard to... Um... Create a beast is asking about the SP ten AM note, which is handwritten. Um, could the M be an N or a W? Um, it it could kind of be an H. Here here this is the signature in question. Uh which is not in focus there, but there it is. Um, it kind of looks like an H. Looking close, uh, it looks more like an M, but it could conceivably be an H. Not really a W, not really an N. Um, okay, so Schulenberg arrives at the party at 8.30. Uh, Courtney meets... Is, is set to meet um, Captain... What's his name? Captain Egan at 8.30. Uh, suggests that they will pounce uh, at 10. Um, at 10, the, the note in his uh, possession with the weird AM signature says SP10, Spaniard, tonight, 10 p.m. Um... Which seems like when he says to Captain Egan, we're going to pounce at 10 p.m., that is referring to Spaniard. Um, and this is information that he got from Alexi, maybe? Uh, although Alexi did not admit to any of it. Um, Okay. So, uh, one of the things that I know about this game uh, is that there is a tendency for people to overthink it. We still have one person who gave us an alibi that uh, doesn't track doesn't hold up we could investigate the Schulenbergs uh, there is certainly shit going on there um, I'm just not certain that it's relevant. Although Mycroft thinks that they're all spies, so maybe. Um, we went to the Spanish embassy. We went to the Russian embassy. Uh, neither of them gave us any information, really. Except that the Russian dude is a uh, is handy with a pistol. 
Oh, also... I mean, we know from the newspaper. I guess that's the thing we know from the newspaper. Marlowe and Schulenberg and... Zobar are all also handy with pistols. Okay, I still think that um, uh, Lord... Oh, could Alan have been selling uh, info. Yeah, but if he was, why would he alert, um, the Admiralty to the, to potential leaks, to the idea that there was a leak? And certainly why would he, um, apparently give them a call to action? I guess as, like, a frame to draw attention away from himself. But then, who is he selling information to? I guess the Germans would be the logical choice. And he thinks that he's playing them. I'm not sure how. He's selling information to this guy and sleeping with his wife. But actually, she's not his wife. They're both spies. We could go to her house where she lives under her actual name. Well, she doesn't live there. But we could go to the house, the address of the person that she actually is. Uh, no, Archduke, go ahead. If you found, uh, if you found info in the directory, go, go for it. Um... Like that's fair game. If you if you if you were looking in there and you found something, then I think that's worth uh, worth knowing. So what did what is what is um, the German woman's actual name? We found that out from Mycroft. Uh, Frida Rudel. Is she in the directory. E Q R Rudel. She is not. So we cannot go to that address. Oh, fuck. Oh, God damn it. That is good. Oh, that is too good. Yeah, okay. So there's an inn. Now, I don't know if this is... I don't know. I don't know. Um, there's an inn called Spaniards. Spaniards Inn. Uh, which is a better uh, potential meaning of Spaniards. On a note. From... Uh, it would appear the Russian attache. Uh, okay, so that suggests... Because um, Delguera didn't say anything about uh, Meshkov coming to his party. He, ju he only name-dropped uh, von Schulenberg. So it's possible that... Uh, Meshkov called for a meeting at uh, a third location, the, the Spaniards Inn, and uh, Courtney Allen went to Captain Egan saying, like, he's going to be here at this time. Be ready with your guards. Should we go to the Spaniards Inn? Should we go to the Spaniards? Okay, if we go to the Spaniards Inn, here's what's going to happen. If we go to the Spaniards Inn, we're going to find out that Alexi showed up at 10 p.m. 
took a table for two, sat there for an hour, never ordered dinner, and eventually left. Which would suggest that Courtney Allen uh, was suspected Alexi was implicating Alexi to uh, or was about to implicate Alexi to Captain Egan but never got around to any of it because he was shot in the chest at 7 o'clock. I don't I don't know if I want to go there because I'm pretty sure that's what we're going to find out. No, I do want to go there because I'm not as smart as Sherlock Holmes and I mostly just want to get this right. Okay, so what would that mean? Okay, nobody has an actual alibi. But only one person has given us an alibi that we've checked that didn't hold up. The surprise at the plant was for 8 a.m. And that is when Alan showed up at the plant and nobody expected him there. I think that's what the surprise was. Uh, Ragland... I just, I can't get off of Ragland. It seems like... Ragland was either trying to put suspicion onto or take suspicion off of uh, the, the worker dude. Um, but he said that he was at the plate plant working late at the time of the murder and he wasn't so he must have done it I mean we can't go back and press him on that um Okay, Creative Beast has a theory. Maybe uh, Alan took the note from somebody's desk. It wasn't given to him. If he so, let's imagine. Let's look at it again, and then we're gonna wrap this fucker up because SP10 Spaniard tonight, 10 p.m. a.m. Uh. Could that have been a note on uh, what's his name's desk? Camp? Could that have been a note on Camp's desk? I mean, that's kind of goofy. Oh, but he didn't actually go to Camp's office. He went to Raglan's office. So he goes to Raglan's office. He finds a note. This adds up. Shit. He goes to Raglan's office. He finds a note. It's from... Alexei Meshkov, the the Russian attaché. It says, SP-10, Spaniard, tonight, 10 p.m. He calls on uh, Egan, says, ready your folks to pounce tonight at 10. Um, Ragland kills him. To keep all of this under wraps. Uh, sets up the whole story about camp. I can't remember if that got corroborated. But one way or another, the whole deal about camp is to throw suspicion off of the Russian government. 
Because it makes it look like maybe something is going on with the French. Okay, just real quick, I want to look at... I want to revisit uh, when we went to... Um, what the hell was that? Uh, when we went to the plant... Um, drawer in Raglan's office left partially open some weird stuff in there uh, camp has a frame photo of a young woman that was super weird um Okay, I want to. I want to. I'm gonna go back. I'm gonna look at the uh, the Raglan stuff. Twelve Southeast Deverell at the plant. Uh, ooh, southeast, 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 southeast. Twelve Southeast. Um. I was called away, and when I get back, Mr. Allen, he hands me a note. Says it come to Lord Ragland, come for Lord Ragland, and I was to be sure he gets it. He also says that he'll see Lord Ragland some other time, and perhaps it's best I don't even mention that he came by. Lord Ragland was in a bit later, stayed for a couple hours, and left, that, uh, left for the day. Odd it was. Came in, saw that the memo from his Russian accomplice was missing, figured that Alan had come by and seen it and taken it, so goes off to murder him. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Photo, photo is his French fiance. That makes sense. Uh... I like all of this. I like this theory. I like it a lot. I think it all holds together. Um, did uh, did Meshkov have an alibi? He did. He said he was um, performance at Covent Garden. Uh, theater on March 9th. I don't think there's any way to verify that. But maybe there is. Maybe I'm underestimating uh, like Brit the British class nonsense. I'm just going to look in the paper real quick to see if I can find any information about, what was it? The Covent Garden Theater March 9th. Not obviously. I could definitely find the theater in the directory. I will, I guess, go there. I just, I'm not sure what I'm going to find there. Um, okay, let's do that. That sounds like it's probably the thing to do. Um, Covent? No, wait, wait, wait. But wait, but wait, 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 wait. What is the point of this? I'm not going to do this. Hold on. I'm not going to do this. Because I don't think that he shot anybody. I think that he was a spy. I think that he was stealing government secrets. That's all I think. He probably did go to the theater... To give himself an alibi. Meanwhile, Lord, what's his name? Rag Ragtag. Uh, that he's the one who killed him. Uh. 
I think I'm ready to solve. It's 1041. Let's fucking do it. Uh, Raglan did it. Uh, let's solve this fucker. Okay. So, I turn to the back of the book. I am, at some point, gonna, like... I just need to read through this entire... All of the evidence. Who killed Courtney Allen? Uh, Lord Ragland. Why was he murdered? Uh, he was, uh... Uh too close to discovering that Ragland uh, was selling military secrets. What was the significance of the message found in Courtney Allen's notebook? Which one? I mean, the, the, uh, the, of the messages in the notebook, uh, the plant surprise was a surprise inspection slash uh, confrontation. Um, the, uh, Captain Egan was a meeting, uh, I don't know when that was planned, but to, uh, coordinate with him to, uh, uh, take down the Russians. Um, the separate, the memo that is in there was a, uh, a note that he took off of Raglan's desk, uh, instructing, uh, Ragland to meet with Alexei Meshkov at the Spaniard that night. What was the reason for Richard Camp's visits to the French embassy? He had a fiance there. Why was the tip of the cigarette found uh, at the scene of the crime pinched all around evenly? Oh, I thought that was... I don't know what that means. I don't know what that means. Who was Courtney Allen's paramour at the time of his death? Uh, the woman that he thought was the wife of the German attaché. Uh, what was special about the weapon used to kill Courtney Allen? Uh, good question. How could Wiggins easily make 10 pounds? Okay, I don't know the answers to all of these, but I do know the answer to one of them. Don't know what was special about the weapon used to kill Courtney Allen. Oh, cigarette holder. Okay. Okay. A uh, cigarette holder. Because um, because when we went and visited, what's his name? Is that uh, did he use a cigarette holder? What was his? Um, Lord Raglan, 56 Southwest. Southwest, Southwest, 56 Southwest. Uh, he inserts it into an ebony cigarette holder. Very good, chat. Um... Okay. Yeah, very good. Uh, I don't know about the other things. The 10 pounds, I'm guessing, is there something in the newspaper? Just kind of want to like skim it. Is there something that I should know that says 10 pounds on it? Um. I don't see anything that specifically says 10 pounds. What did Watson say about Thad pistols? I don't remember that at all. Do you remember where, like, when that was? What part of the uh, investigation that was? Thad pistols. Um, chaps in Watson's regiment had Grant 
arms pistols. I did wait, I didn't blah blah past anything. I did say blah blah at one point, but it was over an ellipsis. It was not over information. Thaddeus Grant, cater to a very elite clientele. Most of the chaps in the regiment were equipped with pistols from Grant's Why Braxton, you've heard me speak of Braxton Holmes. He had a pair of the finest dueling pistols. Uh, okay. I don't get it though. So Grant I mean Grant like the it's an arms company. They make guns. Presumably uh the gun that the senior vice president of the company would have used would have been one of their guns. Uh, and they do make dueling pistols, but I don't... It, what's the difference between a dueling pistol and, like, a regular pistol? Um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's fine. I did, I did say blah, 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 which certainly implies... And I did say it right there, and it, that, that certainly implies that I was um, skipping over stuff. I didn't mean to actually skip over stuff, but... Um, No, you're, you're, sorry, Huck, no hard feelings. I did not mean to be uh, defensive. Uh, uh. Okay, well, I will go with dueling pistol as an answer to that question. I don't have any actual evidence to back it up. Uh, except that the, they did, the company does make dueling pistols or did at one point. Uh, and then I have no idea how Wiggins could easily make 10 pounds. All right, here we go. Solution. We are gathered once again at 221B Baker Street, comparing notes and discussing the case, trying to unravel its many threads when Holmes finally speaks. From the outset, it was obvious that the theft of Mr. Allen's wallet was but a decoy for the perpetrator's real intent. Yeah, no, we got that. In the first place, it's unlikely that a common criminal would have overlooked two valuable rings. In the second, simple robbery would not explain the absence of a folder marked SP-10A in the briefcase. But the briefcase was found locked, protests Watson. As far as we know, Alan locked it and remained so until you, excuse me, yourself sprang it open. I might add that I was quite shocked at your adeptness at such a larceny. Thank you, Watson. To study the criminal is to acquire knowledge uh, of criminal methods. In any case, the murderer must have opened it as evidenced by the spread eagle position of the body and the placement of the briefcase with regard to it. I, I guess? Um, it's, <laughs> it's a tiny naval gun. It's... <laughs> uh, okay. Um... Uh, as Alan was shot, his arms described an arc out and away from the body. The briefcase, then, appears to have been flung some distance, as indicated by the gouge in the leather causing, caused by its scraping along the jagged cobbles. Yet it was found beside the body, and more significantly, waist high, exactly the right position for the murderer to have retrieved it and brought it to the key uh, on Allen's catch fob. Knowing that the contents of the folder were central to the murder and that the code stood for Special Project Number 10, a new naval gun for the Admiralty, it was a simple matter to cull two suspects from the customer list of Benson and Hedges Imperial brand smokers. The cigarette found at the scene was, of course, a Benson and Hedges cigarette. You must mean Count von Sch Schulenberg and Emil Zobar. Shit. 
military attaches from Germany and France. No, not... Oh, yes. Oh, thank God. Uh, Wiggins is an idiot. No, not at all. Remember, all technical data was kept at the Deverell Street plant. Folder SP-10A, like the others in Allen's briefcase, contained only administrative data, data that would have been of little or no use to a foreign power. It could, however, contain something that would be damaging to a company employee. Oh, shit. Therefore, the two significant names on the Benson and Hedges list were those of Lord Ragland and Richard Camp. Okay, well... Captain Egan quite unintentionally went a long way toward clearing camp. A visit to the plant completed the job. His visits to the French embassy were certainly suspicious, asserts Watson. The photographs on his desk explain them perfectly. The church in the background with the unfinished towers was the Notre Dame Cathedral in Paris. Mr. Camp's lady love is French and lives in the French embassy. Further, I suspect that the lady has some familial relationship with Emile Zobar. The Benson and Hedges Imperials, and purchased by Mr. Camp, a cigar smoker, uh, were intended as a gift for Monsieur Zippar. By that process of elimination, then, Lord Ragland is our man. But why? What was the damaging information in the folder? asked Watson. From the cryptic wire sent to Egan, the note concerned Spaniards intercepted concerning Spaniards intercepted by Allen, which, by the way, explains why a note signed A.M. was in Allen's handwriting. Wait, what? Okay. From the cryptic wire sent to Egan, and the note concerning Spanner, Spaniards intercepted by Allen, which, by the way, explains why a note signed AM was in Allen's handwriting. Oh, so he copied the note. It's clear that Raglan was selling Special Project Number 10 to a foreign power. Whatever evidence Allen had was in the folder uh, and about to be taken to Captain Egan. No, this is good. This is all good. I believe Mr. Allen uh, went to the plant that morning to confront Lord Raglan with that evidence. When he intercepted the note, he saw the chance to catch Raglan and A.M., Alexei Meshkov, military attaché at the Russian embassy, red-handed. He set up the meeting with Egan and was ready to pounce. Okay. Uh, Raglan, for his part, was either told of Allen's surprise visit or and the intercepted note, or else he detected something amiss with the note itself. He probably waited during the day for the axe to fall, and when it didn't, he realized that Alan was playing a waiting game. He took up station in the alley, knowing that Alan would come that way, and shot him. S Holmes solved the case by following four leads. He first visited the crime scene and the Grant Society of Armaments. He then investigated the ci cigarette butt by going straight to its maker, Benson and Hedges. Then he met Ma Captain Egan at the Admiralty, and thanks to the name of the street obtained uh, at the Grant Society of Armaments and the Map of London, finally went to the Deverell Street Manufacture Plant. His score is 100 points. For this case, the leads at 47 Northwest Captain Egan's residence, 61 e uh, EC William Linhart's residence, 9 Southwest German Embassy, uh, 34 is Southwest, Alexa, Alexei Meshkov's residence. Uh, oh, I got it. These are free. These are redirects. So actually, um, uh, Kyla, this is probably your house rule is encoded here. It's just not. So like it, we officially get, uh, I, I, I don't know which of these we did. We did three that we thought were, uh. So Captain Egan's residence is free, uh, the Spanish Embassy is free, and Alexei Meshkov's residence is free. So, and we counted those as free, so great. Part 1, who killed Courtney Allen? Lord Ragland. Got it, 25 points. Uh, why was he murdered? He had discovered that Lord Ragland was about to set uh, sell SP-10A to a foreign power, 25 points. Count it. Uh, what was the significance of the message found in Courtney Allen's notebook? It was It's where the sale of the SP-10A to Alexei Meshkov took place. Uh, yeah, more, I mean, it was the a meeting between uh, Ragland and Meshkov. I'm, I'm going to count that. I mean, yes. Uh, what was the reason for Richard Camp's visit to the French, that, also 25 points, sorry, these have all been 25 points. What is the reason for the Richard Camp, Richard's, 
uh, this is all typoed to fucking hell. What was the reason for Richard Camp's visits to the French embassy? He was visiting his fiance and at Zobar, 25 points. Got it. 100 points right fucking there. Why was the tip of the cigarette found at the scene of the crime pinched evenly all around? Uh, because it was smoked through a cigarette holder, 10 points. Who was Courtney Allen's paramour at the time of his death? Countess von Schulenberg. Uh, Fredo Rudel, 10 points. What was special about the weapon used to kill Courtney Allen? It was a weapon from the Grant Society. I don't think we got Grant Society, guys. I think we guessed Grant... Uh, uh, Grant Arms Company, but I don't know what Grant Society is. How could Wiggins easily make 10 pounds? By returning the evening to the Countess von Schulenberg, see ad in newspaper, it was lost during her meeting with Alan at the Bishop's Finger. But the earring wasn't... Oh, is it a ruby ring? Like an ear ring. I I saw ring and thought like finger ring, but I feel like I would know if I saw an earring that it was not... Oh, God damn it. It does say 10 pounds reward. God damn it. Uh, teardrop emerald circled by diamonds. Well. Well. A ruby ring so no I still do, I don't know I don't know how Wiggins uh, would find that um, did we seriously uh, oh, okay so I haven't gotten there I haven't gotten there but uh, I am hearing from chat that uh, we got 120 points minus 20 which is a hundred uh, and, um, that is a tie with Sherlock Holmes. Uh, to tally your score, add the points obtained by answering questions and count the number of leads you followed. Don't count the free leads. Compare the number of leads you followed to those of Holmes. Four in this case. If you followed more than Holmes, subtract five points from your score for each extra lead. If you followed fewer than Holmes, add five for, to your score. Thus, you get your final score. And we did one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, which means 20 points, which means a total score of 100. Chat, you are the fucking best. That was awesome. That was great. It also, now it's 11 o'clock. So, did not take an hour. Uh, but that was super fun. Um, this is maybe not the absolute best venue for it. Thank you to everybody, starting with Jetlag and uh, Captain Quinn was in there. And then I think other people took over who contributed to this amazing uh, notes page. Um, and, uh, 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 that was super helpful. Uh, that was all super great. Um, I feel really good. I feel really good about our success. We solved a case that was like way much better. Okay. So here's what I'll say. Here's what I'm going to say. I'm going to come down on uh, just about everything about that experience. Despite the serious constraints of the medium, like serious constraints, right? This whole, there is no, there's no way to do time causality uh, or iteration. There's no way to repeat visit. Um, uh, despite all of that, we, it still like worked better than the video game. Like j pretty much everything about that made me feel more in fiction, satisfied with what I was doing and how I was doing it. Um, and made me feel like I was solving a crime and uh, also was successful at m l making me able to solve that crime. That was really fucking good. That was really, really, really good. 
Um, okay, I don't know that we'll do it again, uh, just because uh, Kyla and Huck have played all of these, and it was it's a little bit awkward to try to do on stream and uh, required a lot of really active participation from everybody in the chat, which was wonderful, which was really, really neat to get. Um, but uh, uh, I do want to play, I do want to finish Tacoma, like uh, seriously. Um, and I want to play Hitman at some point. I got a bunch of other games that I also want to play. So um, probably we'll do something else n next week. I feel like I have a Thursday thing coming up at some point for work, but I don't remember when it is. So it's probably not next week. Um, rad. Thank you, everybody, for being here tonight. This was wonderful. This was a lot of fun. Thank you especially to everybody who has subscribed uh, uh, subbed to the channel, uh, and has, um, uh, donated bits and cheers. Uh, all of that is, um, super duper lovely and super duper appreciated. I really, it means a lot to me. Uh, and, um, thank you also to everybody who, uh, helps out so much making this channel run. Um, first and foremost, and especially Eve, uh, but also, um, everybody else who helps moderate and run additional activities. Uh, it's, um, it, none of this would work the way that it does without you. I really, really, really do appreciate it. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, there's lots of places to, to hang out with the community and, uh, dig a little bit deeper and get to know folks. Um, there's the, uh, Discord channel. There's a Steam, uh, uh, group i think is what it's called steam steam groups is that right uh there's a um youtube channel youtube channel obviously uh where the vod's usually go up uh usually because um eve does them so thank you enormously for that um there is also uh there's other stuff that i'm forgetting um there's uh the book club that lives on the discord and uh uh the podcast uh which is playing spore right now um which is a pretty uh super neat little um uh little little ea game from a few years ago uh and then of course uh uh I am an, and a bunch of the community are on Twitter, um, so you can follow us in our conversations there. Um, okay, rad. You guys are all great. Uh, have a great night. Have a great weekend. Have a great global game jam if you're participating in that. Um, I will no doubt be uh, tweeting updates from that as it goes. Uh, Marcy and I have an idea of what we're going to do um uh sort of regardless of what the theme ends up being they're going to announce the theme tomorrow um but i think we we have an idea of the the general idea of the form of the game that we want to do uh and i think it's kind of rad um we'll see we'll see how it turns out um yeah that's it have a great weekend I will see you uh, on Monday for Mostly Walking, and I'll see you next Thursday for uh, some more play-by-play. -play. All right. Bye.